Welcome to the RV Podcast. This is episode 436. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to go from a sore back to having sweet dreams. How to replace your RV bed mattress. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the podcast. I'm Mike Wendland. This is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. And if we look a little tired uh, this week, uh, for those of, we you, are. <laughs> those of you watching us on the video version of the podcast, we are. This is a big week for us. Yeah, we're moving out of our house of 30 years to the other side of the state, and we're downsizing. Michigan, here to here. <laughs> and the other house isn't done. What else can yeah, I the say? other house isn't done. Can you imagine that? So that's one other thing that's nice to have about an RV. This is mm -hmm. our um, the ten acres of property that we bought over in Western Michigan, and we uh, immediately have set it up. So we've been staying there on and off for the last several months in our RV. So no big deal in the sense that we can stay in our RV, but um, just a lot of a lot of hassle. The biggest which I've got to pull this whole studio apart and move it and install that. That's my thing. Jennifer's just got to do the whole house <laughs> and the whole other house, right? And we've been selling and giving away everything in our house. Yeah. Everything. It has been a task. but uh, So this is a nice break for us, having to sit down and be able to, uh, to record the podcast. Uh, before we get too far, we want to congratulate Emily from Lansing, Michigan. She is the winner of our latest giveaway. Uh, we had over... Uh, 65,000 entries uh, to win a spot GPS dog collar. I am impressed. Yes, that's a lot. That 65, really 000. is a lot. That's got to be the most that's ever put their names in for anything, isn't it? Yes, it was just, it was amazing how many people responded. Uh, so many so that we have another giveaway of another cool product that we'll be announcing next week. We try and run a couple of giveaways every month or so. But Emily, you got that spot on dog collar. That's an awesome collar. It lets you uh, put the collar on and it uh, communicates with satellites. Mm -hmm. And then you're, um, you draw on an app, you draw a, a boundary and where you are, happen to be. And if the dog goes out of it, he gets a little vibration or a tone and it corrects him. And it works for Bo. He runs leash free on our, uh, our 10 acres of property in Michigan that we're moving to and then uh, on our property in Tennessee. It is a wonderful collar to have because you can change it for different places where you go, you're visiting, you're on vacation. You uh, can make a new map yeah. for all the different places yeah, it's, that you go. I love it. it it's, a, it's a great investment. We really, uh, it's every cent we paid is well worth it. It's been really good. Um, crazy week weather-wise. We in Michigan went through a big ice storm. We were actually camping and had to cut a, a camping trip a little quick to get back before the ice hit. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people without power. And then as, I'm, as we're recording this this week, there's another one coming through. Um, we have on our blog a story about how to keep your water uh, hoses and, and water system from freezing up if you do some cold weather camping. Be sure you check that out. New content on the RV Lifestyle blog, rvlifestyle.com, every single day, and we urge you to visit there as well. This podcast being uh, released on our YouTube, RV Lifestyle YouTube channel, a video version, and on all your favorite uh, apps, as well as uh, on the rvlifestyle.com blog itself. Do us a favor, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, would you please do so on your favorite app? We would appreciate that much. All right, when we come back, a subject near and dear to all RVers, <laughs> uh, how to sleep better on those uncomfortable mattresses that come with most RVs today. <laughs> we'll be right back. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many and found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress, and it arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we did was put it on the bed, unroll it, 
and wait for it to recover from the compression. Oh, does this ever feel comfy? It's so cushiony. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers, and we found ourselves ready to order another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. That first night's sleep was luxurious and deep, and it's been like that ever since. The RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding comes with a 120-night sleep trial and a 10-year warranty. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourself to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Something else that's very important is that Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all their RV mattresses in their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the costs. And right now, if you visit rvmattress.com slash rvlifestyle, you'll get 20% off your mattress with the code rvlifestyle. Again, use the promo code rvlifestyle for 20% off the cost of the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We're sure you'll be as thrilled with your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding as we are with ours. It really is the most comfortable mattress we've ever slept on. All right, welcome back. Time for the interview of the week. We're going to talk this week about RV mattresses. And uh, the, um, the folks, we'll have an interview later on with the, a guy from Brooklyn Bedding. They make the RV mattress, which happens to be the one that we just bought. Now, they're a sponsor, but we brought them on the interview because we thought you'd want to learn a little bit later on uh, when we print them on here about why um, today's mattresses are so much better than what we maybe have been used to in an RV. Um, but let's start with, uh, with a couple of things that we did some research. We have had seven rvs over the last uh, oh we've had i think our, our more lifestyle. than i think we've had more than seven and let me tell you there's been many a night that we did not get good sleep and you buy those foam pads or different things to put on top of i mean i think the worst sleeping that we had was the sofa that made into a bed now maybe they've gotten them better yeah, yeah. gotten better than what they used to be now we are with mattresses and uh how many of you i mean you get in there and you lay down you go oh Hard as a rock is usually the number one complaint about a mattress. And, and it doesn't have to be that way because one of the things we've learned is that um, even the manufacturers of RVs, most of them, all you gotta, if you are ordering it, you should be able to order a new one and say, hey, we like a hard or a soft or a medium, and they should be able to provide it for you. But most of the times when you're ordering an RV, the salesperson never tells you that, and you kind of get this catch-all that comes with all RVs. And... And let's face it, most of them are pretty uncomfortable. It really does make a difference whether you sleep on your back or on your side or on your stomach. And to tell you the truth, I don't think anybody has ever asked us with Never. all of our RVs Never. what type of mattress. It just comes with the mattress. And usually it's, in our case, it's usually way too hard. And that's a big difference because one of the things when we, we've we done research, even on our current RV, our current uh, fifth wheel motorhome we've we bought that uh, a year ago april in april 2022 and uh, we've had three mattresses in it including our new one that we just put in that is finally we found a good one but uh, you mentioned three different types of sleepers and, and let's talk about finding which one you are and so you know what to look for the first type is a, a Back sleeper. <laughs> Those are the people who kind of lay on your back and you just spend most of your night on your back. And so if you're on your back, you need to uh, cushion your shoulders and hips and lower back. So a good choice we have learned from all the different sleep experts out there is what it, a medium to a firm mattress. You're the easiest one to please. You might actually like, if you're just a back sleeper, you might like the ones that come in an RV, those, the standard ones. Uh, it, a, a medium, firm mattress uh, keeps you from sinking too much in. You know, that's probably why they put the medium, firm mattresses in, I think, all the RVs. They're, yeah, it's they're a, harder because that's probably most people sleep on their back. And, and it, it limits uh, over-flexing of your spine Still will cushion your shoulders and your hips and your lower back, but uh, it's, it's a good choice, uh, a medium to firm mattress. 
depending on how heavy you are. Uh, you know, the heavier you are, the more you want to go towards a firmer mattress, I think, in that case. Now, the but other kind like is... Like, for me, I'm a side sleeper. I am too, mostly. And if it's too hard, my shoulders hurt, my hip hurts. So it really doesn't work for me. But on the other side, uh, if you're a side sleeper, it shouldn't be too cushy. Right. Because the gravitational pull will strain your spine. And for most side sleepers, you would then choose... I would get a medium soft to a medium. Right. And uh, if you're a, a real lightweight, um, not very sleeper. heavy side <laughs> sleeper, you can you can go towards a soft. But uh, you know, if you're on the heavier side, which me, I would want to go you know medium soft in that area, medium to soft. Uh, but uh, then there are people who are combination sleepers, who do side and back. And the same thing would apply to you. You'd probably be good with a, a, a medium if you're that. If a combination. That side back. I'm picturing yep. a rotisserie chicken. That's kind of what they are. And okay. then, there's the, then there's one other kind. And there's a lot of them. The stomach sleeper. Yeah, I find that hard to believe that everybody's sleeping on their stomach. And the first thing you think of, you sure wouldn't want too soft because it's just like a baby. You'd sink into that mattress. But you, you, you want to, uh, to have it support you enough to hold your spine in the proper alignment and yet still be soft enough you know to cushion the chest and the belly and the hips and the knees typically that means you're leading towards the firmer end of it uh, medium firm to firm, firm you know depending again on how heavy you are uh, the heavier would go firm the the, the lighter weight sleepers would, would go medium but uh, that helps and there are some other things that we learned that you should look for. Yeah, I didn't realize, just like everything else in the world, like your cell phone and your computer and everything, how technology is always advancing and changing. They've even figured out a way now for to keep the bed cooler, the mattress cooler. Yeah, this, this kind of special foam that offers what they call dynamic cooling. And that's, <laughs> if you, if, uh, we have that on ours now. And what we notice is that we will sometimes wake up really hot and even though it's quite cool in the room uh, uh you know it's really cool in the room for us we found that the room should be uh in the low 60s and that's that's how we sleep how about the best. 59 is that's what, what it's been the last yeah all the folks from the south are gonna go you gotta be kidding me yeah. <laughs> 59 something nice about getting in there and having a couple yeah. blankets on you and even no, the window not, open folks that's, that's just us uh, <laughs> that's everybody's just, a little different and then uh, another thing to look for is, is a layer of coils. Now, we're not talking about the old springs that, you know, the old mattresses in the house used to have. These are little tiny coils, really. And uh, some mattresses, the higher-end mattresses, have over a thousand of them. And they give you pressure point relief uh, for lumbar support. So if you have a lot of problems with back pain, lower back pain, this is what to look for, uh, a lot of those coils in there. You know, I didn't realize there were little coils in there because I'm still thinking about those great big coils no, no, that used are little to be on the ones. mattresses. So I didn't understand Something, the technology. And the third thing that we would urge you to look at is the uh, the weight of the mattress. Oh, yeah. Um, remember, you know, an RV has only so much weight it can have. Uh, and the RV manufacturers want to keep that weight down as low as they can. And so the standard... RV mattress that most, I'm going for king size mattress is what we have, uh, is uh, about 110 to 115 pounds. 145 for a king. For uh, On the one that we bought, it's, it weighs about 145 pounds. Yeah. So it's heavier. We'll have a question later on about that. And I might as well just go to it right now. Yeah, you might as because well. Because some of the right mattresses now. have, uh, have you can lift them up and you have storage underneath, which is great mm -hmm. in an RV. And you have these uh, struts that if you lift it up, it'll stay there. Well, they'll, they'll may hold the lighter weight standard one that the RV manufacturer puts, but when you bring in a heavier new mattress, and we have a question we'll answer, it's gonna be kind of repeated at the end of the program, uh, those, those lighter weight struts won't work, so you have to replace the struts, which we did. We, we found experienced that, that. I mean, yeah. we were like, oh, I can't keep this thing up. <laughs> so I'm giving away the question and answer, yeah. but, but uh, it's one of our, our questions that we wanna talk about. So those are the things that we learned. Now, we picked a mattress from um, the people who now sponsor us. We liked it so much. We said, hey, um, you guys, you should be a sponsor because we can speak really well how much we like your mattress. 
Um, our guest is John Merwin, and he is the one of the co-founders of uh, Brooklyn Bedding. And they're the manufacturers of the RV mattress and a bunch of other mattresses. And we caught up with John. It was a very, on a very busy day, but we asked him to uh, just chat with us a little bit about what people need to know about uh, when they are replacing uh, the mattress in their RV. And um, we brought John on not to, not to do a commercial for his company. We already did that. Uh, but to kind of give us some insight about the manufacture of um, current uh, mattresses. So here's our interview with John Merwin. He is co-founder of Brooklyn Betty. The first question that comes to my mind and what other people ask too is what is the difference between an RV mattress and a home mattress? Yeah, the, there there is no difference between an RV mattress and a home mattress other than, you know, RVs uh, have a lot of different sizes. So, um, you know, you'll have short queens, you know, short kings, and, and you know, you'll have cut corners. And But as far as, um, you know, a, a mattress is a mattress. So, you know, what we're trying to do at, at RV Mattress is, you know, hey, the same mattress that you sleep on at home, you should be sleeping on in your RV. You know, one of the things that we have heard from RV manufacturers is that, well, you need the mattress we send you because of weight limits and all of that stuff so is is there a weight difference between the two that you you've, you've seen some of the stock mattresses that rv ship in and then uh and then your mattresses uh rv mattresses specific uh is there a difference in there is that a consideration i i think you know when you when you buy an rv it, it's the mattress is one of the least talked about you know components in that rv so you know, I, I think the RV manufacturers are going out and they're, you know, they're not putting a lot of thought behind it and they're trying to get the the lowest quoted mattress that they can put in there and, and you know, they'll just let the let the person who purchases the RV deal with it, deal with it, deal with the back pain and, and look at replacing it later, so. Is there any issues with it being real cold or being warm? The, the great thing about the, the mattress industry is the technology that is kind of, you know, evolved over the last, you know, say 10 plus years, you know, there used to be a time where the foams that, that were put in the, in the mattresses, you know, the Tempur-Pedic type foams, memory foams, they, they would react to cold, you know, when it was cold, they would get really, really hard and it would, it would take a while for them to, to soften up. But the, the changes that they've made have, have made it to where, you know, the foams don't react to the, to the temperature in the in the RV or anything like that. Actually, the 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 phase change materials and and the different materials that we're using, you know, when it works both ways. So if if you are cold, it'll it'll release and and release some heat and and to get you into an optimal temperature. And then if you sleep hot, that same material will pull away the heat from your body and and kind of store it. And so. Um, you know the advances that we've made in the last couple of years have, have have helped people dramatically in in especially in the in the in the world of you know hey I sleep hot or I sleep cold you know we're able to get get customers into the right mattress. Now we have heard in the past not to put like an electric heating uh, a pad like a mattress pad not to use that because it would affect the foam. So you're saying now that heating pad, a heat, yeah. you know the uh, mattress pads that are heated? You know, you shouldn't have to do that, um, you know, depending on, on what kind of mattress you're on and, and, and you know, the, the different foams that, that are in that mattress. But, you know, for ours, we, we wouldn't recommend doing that. Now, you mentioned technology today, uh, and you mentioned hot and cold as one of the examples. What other ways have, uh, has technology changed the mattress uh, industry. Yeah, so you know now we're using fabrics that that have far infra infra rays built into them. So it's it's built into the weave, and then that's clin it's clinically proven to create waves of energy that actually produce better blood flow while you're sleeping. And um, that's just one of the examples we have. We also use some copper infused foam, uh, which the copper has a antimicrobial benefit as well as a cooling benefit to it. We've made tremendous strides in, in the technology and, and we encourage people to, to, to if, if you haven't switched out a mattress for the last 
five to 10 years, you know, we're highly encouraging people to do that. Well, that, that leads us right to the next question is how, how long should an RV mattress last? Technically, if, if you're not using it every night and, and you've replaced it in the last year, you know, you, you could get, you could get 10 years out of it. Um, you know, maybe even longer, but you know, for, for general purposes, when, when, you know, it's a mattress that you're sleeping on every night, you know, we, we recommend, you know, in the seven to eight year range, you know, it's probably good to, to replace that mattress. John Merwin, the founder of Brooklyn Bedding. Thank you, John. Yep. Thank you. Again, I want to go back to just reiterate, um, you can get a good night's sleep on a mattress. We went through three in our current fifth wheel and, uh, we're very happy with it now. But we hope that those uh, points about sleeping and uh, will help you. And if you are ordering a new RV, ask the salesman to find out if you can order it uh, in soft or firm or medium and pick it in the right size as we talked about. Stuff you'll learn when you're out there on the road. That really is important. We did not know that until the last motorhome that we got. That they said, "Oh, well, you can order. You can order what, how firm a mattress you want." Yeah, now you tell. Now us. you tell us. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Hey, when we come back, we have the RV news of the week. So stay with us. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds and competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites. Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. It was for Jen and me. We bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee in an incredible collection of mountaintop RV properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. These are five to 62 acre properties that allow RVs year round starting at $79,900. And we loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you can own it outright. It's not a timeshare, it's your property, your way. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to. There's high speed internet and it's so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations, ready whenever you want. And they're selling these properties by appointment, five to 62 acres, $79,900. Financing, big discounts available on multi-lot packages. For information, visit MyRVLand.com. MyRVLand.com. Welcome back. And now we've got a story, Mike, you're going to tell us about something that people really got worked up about. Yeah, we reported this a couple of weeks ago um, in South Dakota. If you remember, we talked about a proposed legislation that would have uh, curtailed, restricted full-time RVers from declaring state residency in South uh, Dakota. A lot of RVers, over the years, thousands and thousands of them have, and there were two bills that would have ended that practice of allowing full-time RVers uh, to claim South Dakota as uh, their resident state. Uh, even though they live full-time on the road, uh, uh, the uh, bills are dead. Uh, there were enough complaints about it that came to the legislature and a lot of work from the Escapees RV Club, by the way, who a lot of their members, are full-time members, uh, contacted them and the club has worked with those legislators. Um, but why South Dakota, for those of you who wonder, because it's a state that has no income tax, has very inexpensive vehicle registration fees. So what has happened is a lot of those private mailbox services have established programs there. For full-timers, they need such a program because you don't have a permanent place to get mail as you travel around the country. And so you declare, you send them the address of this mail service in South Dakota, and then it collects your mail and it, it arranges to send you uh, photographs of your mail, of the envelopes, they'll even open it. Thousands and thousands of people use those services. We have it ourselves and they're very good. Well, along with that, um, there has been for years now, you could not only get your mail there, but you could have South Dakota declared as your legal residency. If you didn't have a permanent home address, there you had one. And you could use that to vote in national elections but you can also vote in state and local elections. And that's what got people riled up in South Dakota because these RVers who maybe never even came to South Dakota were able to vote in state and local elections and that just didn't seem fair. So this controversy is not over. There's a lot of people who still are upset about that and maybe there'll be new legislation that'll modify it. But for now, both of those bills have been killed. They have died. Um, and uh, the, uh, the situation is a, is a lot better. We'll put a link in the show notes to this whole story 
and you can find out much more about it. And that link is always found on our RV Lifestyle blog at rvlifestyle.com. All right, what do you got for us? Well, this is a story that really surprises me, but yet it doesn't surprise me. It's always been a treasure that the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you didn't pay a cent to go through to visit, and it's the most popular national park in the whole country. But not for long, or you're not going to pay anything. They're, uh, they're going to begin uh, permits on vehicles. If you park longer than 15 minutes, you're going to need a permit. And for a year, the permit is $40. For a week, $15. For a day, $5. Now, that permit is going to be attached to the passenger side lower window. And you're not going to be able to take that sticker off and put it on different vehicles. It's on there because it's yeah. got to match your license plate. And all this is going to happen very, very soon, March 1st. And it seems to me when this park, the land was donated... It was supposed to be without any fees. That's why they did this. They don't charge you to get in. They just charge you to stop any place. They just for, charge so you can drive stop. through, oh. and that's about it. And, I mean, a motorcycle, an RV, a truck, cars, anything that's a vehicle is going to need this parking permit. Don't you think 40 bucks is a little high? For the year, if you live in the state of, you know, state. Tennessee or, yeah, yeah. in Tennessee well, or North Carolina. Well, then, yeah. you know, $40 is probably reasonable. Because you visit it a lot. And I can see why they need the money. All of this money, they call it uh, park it forward. And it's a special tag. It has to be displayed. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to raise some revenue. But, you know, it's always like taxes. You open the door and it's just $5 <laughs> a day. Yeah. Well, I wonder how much it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, 15, and I understand they need money. And 15 bucks a week, that's not going to kill you. But, you know, uh, it's, uh, at any rate, it, it's it's a big change for the Smoky Mountains. And we'll put, again, this will be on our RVLifestyle.com blog. You can read all about it. I think legally they probably can't use the National Park sticker. So they had to do their own thing. Yeah, because uh, because that was, I think, the condition of the park. Uh, here's a funny story. This is a story uh, in Pennsylvania, at a Pennsylvania State Park uh, last week. Uh, a, a message in a bottle was found, and it was 50 years old, and it was put there by a camper, and it was noticed by a guy who saw this clear bottle that contained a piece of paper at Howell's, uh, Fowler's Hollow, that's a hard one to say, Fowler's <laughs> Hollow State Park. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have to say that. And it was, it was actually a campground receipt from Bernard Moore for $6, and it was dated in uh, 1973, uh, and there was a paper plate with five messages from the Moore family that they left during their camping trip. And uh, the guy who uh, found it is trying to find Bernard Moore's family and return the message in a bottle. Uh, but it's a fun little story. Um, it came back. It was found. Uh, the whole family, I guess, uh, signed it back in 1973 and then put it in a bottle and threw it in the lake. <laughs> I, that is fun. Now I've got something for all of you that have phobias. <laughs> This is, a, this is a good this, one. This is one that's going to cause you probably not to be able to sleep. <laughs> Especially know? if you see if the video of it. If yeah. you're a person that worries about bizarre things. So we've got this story from uh, California. Santa Claire River is what uh, we're talking about here. And three motor homes uh, uh, belonging to campers at California's Valencia uh, Travel Village RV Park were swept into the uh, Santa Clara River over the weekend after the river embankment suddenly collapsed. So can you imagine being asleep and at midnight all of a sudden, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom? Now this happened at midnight. Yeah. And uh, lots of rain that that had, but fortunately no one was in these RVs. Yeah, that's the good part of the story. Nobody was in those RVs. And even while the news crews were there... The next the, day, yeah. The embankment, they, it was still, you know, falling into the river. So any of you who ever say, maybe you don't want the park... You don't want you the don't one... Want, you don't want on the a, one with the scenic on a little view. little cliff over the scenic uh, yeah, view, yeah. Yeah, closest to the uh, river. Yeah. Especially if there's been a lot of rain. So, I mean, the good news was that nobody was hurt. Down in, uh, in Florida at one of our favorite state parks, Blue Springs State Park. And uh, we did a nice story in that park not long ago. It's uh, uh, the story about some manatees. They come every time of the, every, at this time of the year, every year by the hundreds sometimes. And uh, it was uh, uh, just now, uh, uh, the un it was really an unprecedented release of 12 
rescued and rehabituated manatees were released there. And the manatee, if you don't know, is a, it's an endangered animal. They call them the sea cow because they're big and they're, they're slow, and they're gentle. We've actually swam with them in a, in a couple of other places in Florida. Aren't they called the gentle giants? They're like about a thousand pounds. Oh yeah, they're huge, nine, 10 feet long. Um, and they're uh, in the winter, they come uh, down the rivers and they go into the hot springs areas trying to stay warm. And uh, it's really a good time to look for them in the winter, right up until it starts to really warm up in, in April and May. Um, but they, um, they often get hurt. They're so slow and they're, they're not really afraid of anything by boats. Yeah, it's they very They all common. have propeller scars on their back. Yeah, the poor guys, boats are always running over them because people drive around too fast. And sometimes, so every year the state uh, rescues a bunch of them and they usually put them in a rehabilitation center. Um, sometimes they don't make it, but these 12 did and they released them at Blue String State Park and everybody was really happy about that as we are too. They are really cool. It's worth going to Florida just to get a chance to hang out and see the manatees. And uh, there's a lot of these state parks in Florida up uh, in the in the north central area that you can stop and, and see these things. And you can kayak around them and with them. And um, in Indian River, you can actually swim with them, snorkel with them. So it's pretty fun. The first time you did scuba diving. Yeah, I got my my certificate for uh, my, my open water certificate is scuba diving in the Indian River mm -hmm. with, swimming with the manatees. All right. Next segment coming up after this break, new travel tech. So stay with us. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. One of the most exciting developments for RVs is happening out west in Arizona. Western Land and Ranches is selling five-acre high-elevation ranches just off the famous Route 66, the birthplace of the American road trip. Prices start at only $39,900, and these are beautiful, secluded tracts of land surrounded by majestic mountain ranges with sweeping valley views. The high elevation is a unique microclimate as well, giving you cooler temperatures, green grasses, and tree cover, making it unique for desert property. The community is in the center of it all, close to the best of the West, Grand Canyon, Las Vegas, Lake Havasu, Lake Mead, Lake Mojave, the Colorado River, Flagstaff, Sedona, and Historic Williams. If you're tired of crowded RV parks and paying high fees for sites, well, ownership might be right for you. This incredible collection of mountaintop properties called Greenwood Ranches hit the market and it's selling out fast. There is no HOA. You can build a house, a cabin, outbuildings, or just RV. It's your property, your way, 100% ownership. Visit the website to get details and set up a showing, ArizonaRVLand.net. That's ArizonaRVLand.net. The new Travel Tech segment comes to you from the pages of NewTravelTech.com. That's our sister blog that kind of chronicles all how technology is enhancing the RV travel experience. And uh, this week, um, we saw a story on NewTravelTech.com that we wanted to talk about. It's about uh, solar lanterns. You remember lanterns? What they used to be like? Oh, lanterns used to be the most dangerous things with <laughs> oil and kerosene and whatever. They and, were uh, smelly. Yeah, they, they smelled. And how do you transport them from place a to place B, and I they're would, heavy. And I would always, then you had, you know, you you hated to pack it up and put it in the RV and have it all jostling around. And 
And then anyway came um, battery lanterns. And, and those were good. Those and were batteries really good. Are Still good. are good. You know, and uh, the batteries tend to be heavy. Mm -hmm. And you've got to... They're expensive when yeah, you have to replace them. Yeah, I was going to say, and not green. <laughs> and in, in our case, what would always happen is I would put it away. We'd go on a trip or two. I'd need the battery. I'd pull it off and the battery was dead. Anyway, this week, uh, NewTravelTech.com was reporting on solar batteries. And we figured, what? Are you going to carry around a big solar panel? But it's not. They're very small. They're inexpensive. They're often inflatable. And we think of the ones that we use called the Lucy batteries. And there'll be a link in the story that you can find on New Travel Tech about that one. But they really are very neat. We love these solar yeah, lanterns. They look like a little plastic lantern, but we use and put, take them, they fold them down. up. And then you make them big when you need light and you can have them blink or <laughs> stay and, on. And they're chargeable. The ones that we have, the Lucy, we just, uh, we collapse it and we throw it on the dashboard of the motorhome or if we're in our truck on the dashboard of the truck and just the sun as you travel and charges us, the top of the little batteries have a little uh, solar charger, solar panels in them. And uh, they charge very quickly and it's enough to run it really pretty much uh, most of the night. Um, they're really neat. Now, um, no more messy fuel, no more heavy batteries, and they're chargeable with the sun's rays. Uh, I think they're ideal. You can oh, put them in a backpack. They really are ideal. But what do we do if uh, there's not a lot of sunshine? <laughs> they actually will charge uh, more than you think from just daylight. Uh, so that's that's the big thing. And, and that's one of the big factors. There's no sun, you know. <laughs> like everything solar. Uh, and if you live in Michigan, where the sun doesn't shine, usually from November till May, <laughs> and then after that, only for an hour or two a day. Now I'm exaggerating, I know. Um, but they're really, I think they're where they really excel is for emergency stuff, you know, to, to have in your camper, in your RV, but even in your sticks and bricks house, in case the yes. lights go out, as has happened with these ice storms that have been going through the country this, this the last couple of weeks. Uh, there are some things to look at. And... Uh, uh, three main features that you should you should consider. And the first is charging modes. Um, they're charged by the sun, but what, as you say, if you run out of sun, uh, some of them will let you, they have a USB plug and you can put it into your laptop and that'll charge them very quickly. Uh, some have electrical uh, adapters. You can plug it into an AC uh, current. And we've even seen some that they have a, has a hand crank. That is fun. So that, that kind of is what... what what you do if there's no sun and they won't charge. You use those features. And we can't emphasize enough how good it is just to have these on hand at your house because it seems like more and more lately you lose your power. Yeah, and it's safer than a candle, you know. Um, the, so so that the charging modes, how do you charge it if the sun isn't there is a good thing to know about. And then the other thing is weight. How much do they weigh? Yeah, I mean, it's so much lighter than batteries or the old-fashioned these inflatable, collapsible ones, you know, don't weigh anything. And they're really easy to carry along. And I think, you know, we have two or three of them and we'll use them. We'll put them on a, the awning pole or we'll put them outside the, the, uh, the RV and on a table or something. And they're really nice. The hardest thing is to remember to put them on the dashboard so yeah. that they can get sun while you're driving. Yeah. And then the third thing is the different lighting modes, depending on which of these solar lanterns you pick. Um, different modes that allow you to adjust the light output. Some, output. <laughs> sometimes you want a bright light and other times you want just a soft light. And if you're into astrophotography, taking pictures of the night sky and all that stuff, um, you, they have a real, if you want to have one that has a very low light so it doesn't give you night blindness as you're walking around um, and, and it will help you, you know, just turn on really low and dim and you can camera, adjust your camera settings. Uh, and it'll help your eyes gradually ad adjust to the darkness, too. Now, um, there are a bunch of them on there, and our friends at NewTravelTech.com did a review, and they listed a whole bunch of them. Uh, urge, I urge you to look at them. You, it sounds like they'd be expensive, but they're very inexpensive, and I just think it's one of the neat ways that technology can enhance our, our, our camping experience and our whole travel experience. So check them out. Solar lanterns. Very cool. Uh, NewTravelTech.com is where you'll find the full story on all of this. Thank you guys for uh, for uh, watching that. That's our sister blog, and we love to watch that taken off. And it kind of keeps track of travel tech 
um, besides the RV world as well. All right, we come back, your RV questions of the week. Stay with us. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Now it's time for your questions, the RV questions of the week. And we love getting your questions. Please send them to us. Yep, we do. Uh, comments, questions, but anything you see in the show, we'll do our best to answer them. Our, our email is Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. All right, you got our All first right. question. Our first question from Ashley, which we touched a little bit with our mattress conversation. And Ashley says, we got a new mattress for our camper because the one it came with was as hard as a rock. See? I relate to that. <laughs> we do. We have a storage space under the bed and never considered the new mattress might be heavier than the old one. Now, when we lift the bed up, it doesn't stay open. Anybody ever dealt with this type of problem? We have. <laughs> yep. Uh, as we mentioned up in that segment about, about choosing an RV mattress, uh, most of the ones that come in an RV, they get the lightest weight one that'll get somebody a mattress. And usually they're a little over 100 pounds, 115 pounds for a king size, you know. Um, uh, you know, maybe not quite that much for a queen or certainly for singles. But uh, many of the RVs have this storage underneath. You lift it up and they have these struts that are there. And, and they're simple little struts. Uh, but when you put these new mattresses that you got, it if you get a good mattress, it's going to weigh more. And the struts, eh, they can't keep that up. So when you put that lid up to throw your stuff, it'll fall down. You have to have somebody come and hold it up while you're using the storage. But it's really easy to fix. You just replace the struts. And there, we went to Amazon and found ours. Now, you, you need to know how long the struts are. They come in lengths of between 12 inches all the way up to 20 inches. And you should look for a strut that'll hold at least 100 pounds. Uh, so you get two of them that'll hold 200 pounds, and that's more than enough for the largest of the RV mattresses that you'll find. And they're simple. You just take the old ones off and put the new ones on, and, and it's gone. Uh, if you go to our rvlifestyle.com travel blog and look for the show notes, the complete notes for this episode, you can pick up those struts. And I can't emphasize enough, this is money well spent getting struts that can hold that up because you do not want to be reliant upon somebody who might get text or a cell phone call. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another question. This one from Marcy and she says, I saw a video a long time back where Jennifer said, you guys don't pack the clothes that you take with you on an RV trip in a suitcase. She instead showed something like a duffel bag, as I recall. What is it that you use from Marcy? I can't say enough good things about e-bags. Some of you out there told us about them over 12 years ago, and we bought a set. They come three in a set. We got three blue ones for you and three kind of reddish, rosy color for me. They didn't have pink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I say, we love them. I can get so many clothes in there. and I mean, I can make an outfit for a special day or however you want to package your clothes. It's just great. Sometimes I even use those e-bags in a suitcase when we are traveling places. I just like the organizational ability of using these bags. And and they hold a tremendous amount. We fill them. I fill mine up sometimes like that thick. And there's zippers that come around them. They're not that much when you think of it. We've had ours now for, this is the 12th year that we've been using ours. And they still hold up great. So e-bags, sometimes they run out of them. Uh, but we'll put an Amazon, uh, one of our Amazon affiliate links uh, in the show notes that you'll find at rvlifestyle.com. 
All right, thanks uh, for the questions this week. We would love to hear your comments and your questions. Use our email, Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. Send them along. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy trails.